Welcome to Holy Love Lutheran Church. Today's text is The Road to Emmaus, where Jesus walks with his disciples, unbeknownst to them, for over two hours. We begin our time in worship with admitting that we need God and that we long to see Jesus in this time, here and now. Please join me in a confession and assurance of God's good forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. May Almighty God strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. I want to walk as a child of the light. I want to follow Jesus. God set the stars to give light to the world. The star of my life is Jesus. In him there is no darkness at all. The night and the day are both alike. The Lamb is the light of the city of God. Shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. I want to see the brightness of God. I want to look at Jesus. Clear sun of righteousness shine in my path and show me the way to the Father. In him there is no darkness at all. The night and the day are both alike. The love is the light of the city of God. Shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. Let us pray. O oh God, you make yourself known to all his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may see him in his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from 1 Peter, the first chapter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by his great mercy has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for salvation, already to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold that, though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, 
you love him, and even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with the indescribable and glorious joy, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of our souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Psalm 16. Protect me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. As for the holy ones of the land, they are, no, they are the noble, and whom is all my delight. Those who choose another, God, multiply their sorrows. They drink offerings of blood I will not pour out, or take their names upon my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion in my cup. You hold me lot. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. For bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night along my heart instructs me. I keep the Lord always before me. Because he is my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body also rests secure. For you do not give me up to show or let your faithful ones see the pit. You show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures for everyone. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's gospel comes from Luke, the 24th chapter. Now on that same day, two of Jesus' followers were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astonished us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all these things that the prophet has declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, stay with us because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in and stayed with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed it and broke it, and he gave it to them. Then their eyes were open and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures for us? That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We're 
really, really good at being busy. And I'm sure if I were to look at your calendar, whether you keep it on your phone, digitally in some app, or on paper and pencil, or like me in a hybrid version of both, there'd be lots of appointments and reminders. Bella's birthday, Casey's retirement, Dr. Nick, 1 p.m., Dr. Young, 10 a.m., committee meeting, HOA fees due, Joe's game. Lots and lots of stuff pulling each of us in a million different directions. Remember back to in the Garden of Eden, after Eve and Adam finally admitted to eating the fruit that they weren't supposed to eat, God says, and I'm paraphrasing Genesis 3, 17 to 19, God says, well, because you did this, you're going to have to work all the days of your life to make even food happen. That's one of the few times humanity has almost uniformly obeyed God. We've got to be busy. God said so. It's the punishment for the first sin. Keep going, keep going. We stopped listening after that one, ignoring the fourth commandment that Moses gave, keep the Sabbath day holy. Which is why Jesus then in Mark chapter 2, verse 27, has to bop back in and say, hey, 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 the Sabbath was created for you all so that you all would take a break and remember God. Because you, the people, and your tendency is to always do, redo, and overdo, to be in control, you need an entire day of remembering that you are not in control. God is. And the Sabbath was created for you to remember that. So chill, relax, rest. You are not in control. God is. Our reading from Luke begins with the words, Now on that same day. That same day being the first Easter, which this is now the third week our gospel reading has spent on this one day. So far that day, the Marys have found the tomb empty. And then later in that same evening, Jesus shows up in a locked house to most of his disciples, except for Thomas. So sheesh. Jesus was dead for a few days, and then he just went nonstop, appearing first at the tomb, then breaking through locked doors, and now in this passage, walking nearly seven miles with two other disciples. FYI, seven miles would take about two and a half hours to walk. Jesus did a lot on his first resurrected day. And one of the things we learn about Jesus from this and the other two Easter stories we've had so far is the infamous omni nature of Jesus. Omni meaning all. I know maybe it comes to your mind too, but I think of at the end of the Oprah show where Oprah comes over on her voiceover and says, guests stay at the all-inclusive, all-magnificent, all-sweet Omni Hotel. But no, it's not a hotel. Omni means all. It's a prefix, goes before a word. We proclaim in our faith that God is omnipotent. He's all-knowing. We proclaim in our faith that God is omnipresent, always there. So we now see in the resurrected Jesus these things too, confirming that Jesus is indeed one with God. It's that complicated trinity again, the three-in-one nature of God as creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Jesus isn't just some dude who was brought back to life, is what these Easter stories are telling us. Because we do have other examples in the Bible of people who were brought back to life. Elijah brings back a widow's son in 1 Kings chapter 17. Jesus infamously raises Lazarus in John chapter 11. And then Peter in Acts chapter 9 raises Tabitha, who is also known as Dorcas. These are incredible miracles. At least three other people were brought back from the dead. But how is Jesus in his resurrection different from being brought back to life? different from these other three. For starters, Christ's resurrection has no initiating person. Elijah's not there. Peter's not there. It's Jesus alone in a tomb. <laughs> Jesus was resurrected at the power of God alone. God didn't need an intermediary to work on this. The second way it's different is that Jesus' resurrection is permanent. The others eventually die for real. Our belief as Christians has us proclaiming that Jesus' resurrection is not only the first fruits of what's to come for all of us, as 1 Corinthians 15.20 says, but that we get eternal life. The resurrection life isn't just a second lease on life or an extended warranty. No. <laughs> the resurrection life is the everlasting life, without end. It's impossible to comprehend. So back to that first Easter, on that same day when the resurrection was made known and the impossible to comprehend was happening, two of Jesus' followers leave Jerusalem. It was kind of like last week with Thomas. 
They're likely leaving Jerusalem because it's simply not safe for them anymore. They were known followers of Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth, who was just very publicly executed. They're going back to what they know, or at least somewhere safer for them to be. Their goal for the day is to get out of town, to hightail it to Emmaus. Their calendar has a singular task on it with the underlined message, stay alive. As they're going about their plan, their goal, their busyness, a stranger joins them. But they're so focused on the task at hand and on the events that have happened in the last few days that they don't notice who it is. And they walk for over two hours together and listen to the lecture and the information that Jesus passes on to them. And when it's evening and they sit down together to eat, then they realize that it's Jesus. Jesus is made known to them in the breaking of the bread, the act of communion, Jesus' very body given for us as nourishment. (laughs) Even though Jesus walked with them for seven miles, it was only when they sat down and stopped thinking about the future and enjoyed the present moment that they realized who the stranger really was. In that moment, after that realization, It says in that very hour they went back to Jerusalem at dusk or night when it would have been unsafe to travel and they went quickly. This is a miracle of God in and of itself. But we come to find out that when they reunite with the other disciples, they hear about Simon Peter's encounter with the risen Lord and then they too share their encounter with Jesus. And we find out Jesus was at least four places that day. Omnipotent and omnipresent. Jesus is our all in all, and we can see Christ as we continue to walk in our lives. Amen. Christ is alive, let Christ shine, see. The cross stands empty. Let us profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Joining with the saints around the world, let us pray to our Lord. Good and gracious and everlasting God, we give you thanks that you walk alongside us. We give you thanks that you show us who you are in the breaking of bread, in giving of yourself in communion. Help us to see you in the faces of one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we pray for our preschool, our teachers and staff, and our board, and our students. We ask that you would continue to walk alongside all of them, that it might be a light unto the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we pray for our community partner, Holy Kicks. We ask that you would continue to bless them with donations of shoes, and donations of people's times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we continue to pray for those who have need in mind, in body, or in spirit. We pray today, especially for those we name in our hearts. Empower us to be your hands and feet of the body of Christ here on earth. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Trusting that you hear us and knowing that you care, we lay our prayers before your throne of grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all and also with you. Please share a sign of God's peace amongst one another. Thank you for being part of Holy Love's worshiping community. I ask that in this time, we respond to God with a thankful heart. As you give, we are able to continue our ministries, including this recorded service. You can give online via our PayPal link on our website. You can give via the QR code seen on the screen, or you can send a check into the church. However you choose to financially give, we really appreciate it. It helps us continue spreading the mission and gospel of Christ. Join me in prayer. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church here on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, all of you. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper was over, he took the cup. Again he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Beloved of God, for as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he returns. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. This is Christ's table for all to partake. This is the body and blood of Christ, given and shed for you.
Let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world, and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please receive the benediction. May Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. I want Jesus to walk with me. I want Jesus to walk with me. All along my pilgrim's journey, Lord, I want trials, Lord, walk with me. In my trials, Lord, walk with me. When my heart is almost breaking, Lord, I want Jesus. Go in peace, serve the risen one. Thanks be to God.